Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to start this at the very beginning here. Um, welcome to the TSW Awareness Resolution Campaign that ITSAN is launching. Um, we are so excited to do this, and it is time. Um, it's been a lot of preparation to get to this point, but I'm so excited to um, announce uh, this work that we're doing and super happy that you've taken the time to be here today. I know that we're all busy, many of us, um, but it is going to take the entire community to really push this across the finish line. So thanks for being here. Um, this is what we will be going over today. Um, I'll give a little introduction to myself. I know many of you, but there are some that, that I don't know. When I looked through the registration list, um, there are some names of, of people that I have not met before um, through ITSAN or otherwise. So just want to give you a little introduction my, of myself. And then we'll go over where we are with TSW currently, um, what the challenges are, what our strategy is. Uh, we'll cover some advocacy basics. And then we're going to go over an awareness resolution checklist that we put together. I just kind of want to walk you through step by step and let you know that anybody can do this. It is not hard. Um, and honestly, we're here to hold your hand throughout the whole process. So if you have questions, concerns, thoughts, um, just please reach out. I am here to help with that. And there are others as well. So to give you a little bit of an introduction of myself, I know these are awful pictures, but many of you who have gone through TSW, this doesn't look like anything um, unusual, unfortunately. I started TSW um, a little over 10 years ago, almost 10 and a half years, um, 2012. It was right when ITSAN had just come online, and I was so grateful for that because when I came into it, I had some answers and I had a bit of a roadmap um, to follow. So I was bedridden for about a year and a half, um, living between my bed and the bath. You can see in that picture there that I lost quite a bit of weight, um, but I was red burning skin from head to toe. And um, it was awful, as you all know. Um, I started getting better, but I still was housebound for about three years. And it was five years until my skin stopped burning and I could put my clothes on without wincing. Um, I had a episode of herpeticum at four years TSW that landed me in the hospital. I almost lost my life. And it was really after that point, um, I was just in a really dark place and uh, was tired of fighting. I think you all can relate with that who have gone through TSW. It's just a daily battle. And then when I got hit with that and the fear of fighting this virus on top of uh, what I was going through with TSW, I just really. I felt like I was in this dark cave and I, I lost the will to continue to fight. I fought depression for a while. Um, and then through a series of events, uh, the light got turned on. Um, this fire just started welling up inside of me and I, I made a decision. You know, I can sit here in fear um, thinking that this is going to get the better of me or I can hope that, you know, the medications that I'm on, these antivirals will help me get past this and move on and heal. Um, either way, I have made a decision at that point, I'm going to do whatever it takes to fight this, um, even if it, even if it, it's the end of me, <laughs> because something has to change. Um, and we have to move past this, people need to know what's going on, and we really need to um, see change in our world for those who are coming along behind us. So that's what got me involved in advocacy. Um, I started working with ITSAN in 2017. I met Joey in Grand Haven and she offered me a position on the board, which I was like, what just happened after the conversation? But I got involved in the work, the work of ITSAN. Um, just to let you know, a lot of people are not aware, but ITSAN is a, a small group of very dedicated people. Most of us are volunteers. We have families. Many of us have full-time jobs. So um, this is kind of what we do because we're passionate about it, but we, we do have limited capacity um, with our time and, um, and what we can give. But just so do you know that um, the people and there are, I think everyone here is on the board, um, Jody Orr, Kathy Tullis, Janelle Harris, uh, Jolene McDonald um, are here and we're here to serve you and to serve this cause. So I started um, on the board of directors, I became president for a while, and then I needed to um, move on to another position, but I'm currently serving as the president of the Coalition of Skin Diseases, and we work on behalf now um, of the 84 million people living with a skin disease. So what I went through with TSW really was what propelled me into advocacy and drives me in the work that 
I do um, for our community with TSW, but also, you know, on more of a national level for all skin disease. So moving on, where are we in TSW? Uh, we all know the challenges that were front and center when we were going through this. How in the world does this ever happen to me? Why didn't I know about this? Um, why don't I get more support from my doctor? It's very easy to point the finger and blame and yell on social media, but we all know that that doesn't really bring like the needed change, which is for the medical community to understand what's happening, to recognize this and prevent it, and to help support patients through this process. And, and really to get to the other side where we are appropriate, um, appropriately using these drugs. Uh, so that's like the really front and center challenge that we all feel when we go through this is just like the big, huge why and the injustice of it all. And um, I know we deal with a lot of anger and frustration at the way that the system is, but in order to get past that, we really have to understand how it is all set up, how it works and how we can affect change. So when we look at, you know, healthcare providers don't don't support us. They don't recognize this. Um, they're not listening to me. Well, the reason is, is because in Western medicine, it's all evidence-based. And so for them to, you know, change treatment guidelines, they want to have the evidence and the research to back any of those changes up. So we really have to keep on working backward and, and what is the real need here? Who do we need to get to? So that's what ITSAN has been working on on the past many years um, to reach those people in those positions of leadership, to tell them about what's happening, to really try to promote that research and get it published so that you know it can become more widespread and recognized. And really the change has to trickle down from the top, right? It comes down um, that way. So we have been in dialogue with the FDA and other agencies. Um, we are pushing forward to try to get recognition um, of this condition and letting them know really what patients are experiencing. However, um, you know, as far as research goes and evidence goes that they are wanting anecdotal stories and, and what we are bringing kind of, and unfortunately is at the bottom of that list. Um, they're looking for, you know, observational studies and clinical research and meta-analysis and, and up the line. So it's going to take time is what I'm trying to say. And we've had these conversations, as you can see the strategy on the other side, um, it's and is building out a patient registry so that we can collect that data and actually publish research out of it, which that is giving evidence of what's happening. That's what these um, people in positions of authority uh, want to know. We are going and presenting to these governing agencies and institutions. Um, but really, once we have those conversations, if there is not action, which is kind of where we are right now, um, then we need to really step up our advocacy game and go to those people who are in their positions of authority. So we have kind of tried to navigate through that whole landscape of who's in charge, who needs to make the decision, talk to them. If they're not gonna respond, well then we need to go to the next person who's above them. So because we've gone to the medical community, because we've gone to regulating agencies and you know they are working on it to some degree and we're grateful for that, um, but I think we all feel the urgency that we need to push this forward. There's a lot of people suffering and there are a lot of people coming into this unknowing um, of, of really what the, the risks are. So that's why we have been working on an advocacy campaign. We're doing some things federally, um, but that whole process takes a whole lot longer than what can happen in the states locally. So we started this campaign with um, introducing an awareness resolution because if we can get many states to pick this up, that's going to move whatever we do on the federal level and the national level, it's going to move it faster. So it's it's going to kind of bolster whatever we do on a larger scale. So if you're in Canada and the UK and, and these other areas, it's it's kind of the same thing. So a lot of this stuff is going to be universal and it can translate into different countries, especially if they're set up the way that we are somewhat democratically. Um, but we will be doing a follow-up with those in UK or in Canada if you want more specific um, tools and kind of a roadmap. So just so you know that, um, if you have questions or feel like we need to address this a little bit differently to make it easier for you, we will go ahead and do that. Um, but that's the whole point of doing what we're doing tonight and just kind of letting you know this is, this is, this is, these are the tools that you need. Um, this is what it's going to look like. 
uh, but we're going to try to get as many of these passed in the states as we can. If we can get 25, 30, 40, 50, that would be absolutely incredible. So then whatever we're doing on a national level is going to be that much easier to push across the finish line. The other point of why we're doing what we're doing is because we have been getting more and more report, reports of um, parents being threatened by Child Protective Services, which I can't imagine what that would be like as a parent when you see what's happening with your child and you go to get treatment for them and then the doctor threatens you, if you don't do it our way, we're gonna call Child Protective Services on you and your child will be taken away. That would be horrific and very scary. And I know a lot of parents are living with that fear and some have been faced with it, so one of the reasons why we want these get, to get these resolutions passed is hopefully that will, that will provide another layer of protection that when parents are going to their doctors and they, ha they have another leg to stand on and they can point to this document that has been passed um, by their state as one more piece of evidence that this is happening. Um, the doctor may not be aware of everything around TSW, but at least you know, it's one more layer um, that they can have for protection and also for support. So patients who may be going to doctors who can, cannot find a doctor who's supportive of them, this is another way that they can point to this resolution um, that this is recognized by my state. Um, please look into it. So uh, we're just trying to do what we can as a community to help each other and, um, and to provide that support. And hopefully um, moving forward, like I said, it will make everything else that we're doing a little bit easier. So moving on, um, I know that advocacy can seem intimidating. I know when I got involved in it in the very beginning, it just feels like a big unfamiliar world. I was never involved in anything political except for voting for the president. And even with that, I didn't do a whole lot of research, sad to say. Um, but I, I tell you that because I want you to know um, that no matter your level of advocacy, whether it's like absolutely zero or you've been doing a little here and there, um, anybody can participate in this. And really ultimately, here's what you need. And I just wrote down the absolute basics. You need a will to end TSW. And I know every single one of you on this call has that. You need a little bit of time. And depending on how much you're gonna put in, it could be just sending a few emails. It could be meeting in person with your legislator. So depending on how far you get and what, what bites you get when you put your stuff out there, that will determine how much time it takes, but it really is not gonna take a whole lot of your time. You need a story. And I know each of you has a story and a very compelling story. You need access to the internet, a phone, and a printer. And if you have these things, you can do this. Um, we have been putting together all the tools so you don't have to even think of what am I gonna see in an email? We've already done all that work for you. So um, moving along, here are a couple of things to keep in mind. And this picture that you see is a group of us where we went to the Georgia State Capitol. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And um, we showed up and, and really just talked with our legislators about what we were um, experiencing as patients. And um, it's exciting, what could I say? It's really cool to be part of the process, especially you know, at, at this time, I was introducing an eczema resolution and um, it was passed in the state of Georgia, which it feels really amazing when you can say, wow, I had this done in my state <laughs> and any of us could do it. So one thing to keep in mind and something that I learned earlier on, which was very empowering to me, is that legislators want to hear from you. They need to hear from you. Um, we are the ones who vote them into office and they are there representing us. That is their job is to listen to what the people under their care and their constituents, what they care about, what they want, and then to try to help affect that change. So they really, really, really do want to hear from you and just know that you're not being an inconvenience. You're not wasting their time. That's what they're there for. Another thing is to be passionate about your story. Um, when you go, don't hold back. And it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to get a little emotional sometime. But just remember um, to be mindful of keeping your message front and center. So you don't want to make it all tears and you know anger or frustration or whatever. The main thing is, is you're trying to get a message across. Hey, this group of people has needs and we need you to take action to protect this community. So don't worry about being perfect in your presentation. Um, you are a human connecting with another human. And to politicians, even though sometimes they can feel foreign in a different world, if you're not used to going in that, like mingling in those circles, 
your state politicians, your representative and your senator, they're like your neighbor. It's like your uncle or a friend that you meet at the grocery store. Honestly, these are people just like us who decided to get involved in public service because they cared about change and wanting to make a difference. That's what I hope their biggest reason is. But just know it's a human. Um, you're just connecting with them. You're telling them your story. You want to convince them of, of what's going on and get them to take action on your behalf. Um, I do also want to just give a couple of like super, super basics for those who you know, have not been involved in any of this ever before. You have, um, as, as, at least in the United States, you have um, state senators and representatives um, who work in your state only. So they, like in my state, they would be meeting at the state capitol in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia, and they're working on bills that just affect our state. And then you have senators and representatives who also work in Washington, DC. Um, so those are your US senator and representatives. So there's a difference there. The people that we're connecting with for this campaign are going to be your state senators and representatives. So they're the people who are gonna be working locally in your state. So we're just gonna go over a little TSW awareness checklist. Um, this is what will be on the It's Ann site. I have all of these different resources that I'll be emailing out to everybody at the end um, of this, actually probably tomorrow, I'll send them out, but you'll also be able to find them on the It's Ann website. We're going to um, post all of them there. So the very first thing to do would be just to watch this, um, advocacy training meeting or watch the recording. And then just like we had you write in the chat box, we're gonna connect you with other people from your state. So we have maybe five or 10 of us here in Atlanta who we can all connect and say, all right, let's um, keep in touch. Let's work together. We're gonna you know, make a little team um, to work on our state. Then we're gonna look up our state officials and get their contact information um, by this link here. So if you want to write this down, um, you can, but it will be sent out to you too. It's going to be really easy. You're just going to click on it and it will bring you to a website. You put in your address and it will pull up your state representative and senator. You click on them, look them up on the internet. You will find their phone number for their office. Um, and then you will be calling them to connect with them. So that's the next um, thing on the list is calling the offices of your representative and your senator to ask for a meeting with them to share your story. And you can do this either on a Zoom or you can meet in person. But most of your state representative and senators will have a local office that's very near you uh, because you know I would say probably within 15, 20 minutes of where you live. So if you can get an in-person meeting, that's always more impactful because you have that X factor of being in the room with someone and they can see you, get to know you that way. So that's what I would recommend if you're comfortable with that. But you're going to call the offices, ask for a meeting um, to share your story and asking them to introduce this resolution, which will recognize TSW. And when you're on the call, um, more than likely, you're going to be talking to an office staff person, ask them for their email so that you can follow up with them. And then you will follow up with an email to those offices, addressing that the person that you talk to, and you'll use um, this email to a legislator document, and all you have to do is copy and paste. You can adjust it to the way that you like to make it feel personal, and then you're going to attach a couple of documents that we have prepared as well for them to look at to your email. So this is really easy. You don't have to think of everything you need to talk about with TSW. The I will tell you that the email that I put together is a little bit lengthy, but that's just so that you can pull from that. Um, you can have it as you can have it exactly how I've written it, or you can shorten it up. You can do a little email, a short email and attach a letter to it. You can do whatever you want. But basically, we're just trying to give you the tools to make it as easy as possible to get this done. So next, you will read through um, the best practices for connecting with your legislator. And what I did is I just put a couple of tips in there. Um, I even put in um, a script. So when you make the call to their office, um, I gave you something to say. So it'll be really easy. And then when you meet with your legislator, I give you a couple of tips on that as well. Things to bring, um, that sort of thing. So hopefully you will get a meeting. You'll get those people to bite when you call their offices and you follow up with an email. I know my Senator here in the state of Georgia, his dad had eczema. So he was interested. He's like, yeah, 
come to my office and we'll talk about it. And, and when I went there, he had an insurance business. So most of these people who work at the state level, they have another job, a day job, and he was an insurance agent. So I met at his office and we just talked. I told him his, my story and he's like, yeah, I will totally, you know, introduce this resolution for eczema for you. It was no big deal. It actually was so easy. I just handed him the paper and then he got it done. So I was like, wow. And then he told me too, you know, you'd be surprised how little people get involved in advocacy. And honestly, I wasn't surprised because it had never come, you know, across my radar before, just because I never cared enough to really get involved in this. I think all of us have, um, have reason to push through some of those inhibitions that we have, just because really, when it comes down to it, um, this is our fight. Um, there, because we're personally affected by this, because it's going to be so much to change this. A lot of those in those positions are not going to budge until we really push through, but this is our battle. We need to step up and we need to need to get involved. And so I'm hoping that all of us will take this extra nudge and, and get past some of these barriers. Cause it's, I admit it can, it can feel intimidating, even though at the end of the day, it's not, um, it just really is the fact that it's unfamiliar, um, that can feel, you know, like, ah, the unknowns. Um, but just, again, I'm getting off track, <laughs> but um, just want to encourage you push through. You can do this. It's, it's not hard. So once you go and you share your story with your legislator, um, you may want to write it out beforehand. So you have it on a piece of paper. You can leave it with them. You can even include pictures there because we know that they speak a thousand words. Um, you can print that out and bring any additional documents you want to leave behind, like um, the it's and brochure, which is on the website. Uh, the fact sheet and Lucy's story that I reference here is um, a story of a little girl whose parents were faced with child protective services. And I have been connecting with her. We worked on the story um, and this is actually very recent, um, but Lucy's mom works as a mental health um, trauma counselor. And so she's very familiar with how that whole system works. Fortunately, she was able to navigate through it pretty well. But still, um, what we want to highlight to legislators is that this is a real threat for families and they need support. They need help until we get to the place where this is universally recognized and it's not happening anymore. So once you have your meeting um, with your legislator, do some follow up and, and send them any additional information that they might ask for. I put my email on here and it's at the end of the slide deck as well, but you can reach out to me if you have any questions or if they bring up questions you might not know the answer to, please feel free to reach out to me. So once um, one of your senators or representatives agrees to introduce the resolution, ask all the legislators who are in your state group, who everybody's reached out to, to sign on to that. So once you get one person to say, yes, I will do that, then everybody else, everyone's else, everyone has reached out to just ask them, hey, will you sign on to that resolution for extra support? And if there's enough of you in the state or near the Capitol, I would love to encourage you to organize a TSW Awareness Capital Day. So I know it's it's a bit of a, a leap um, if you live you know, really far away from your capital. I was fortunate to live you know, only an hour away from mine, which is downtown. Um, but if you're nearby and you have like 10, 20 people who live close to the Capitol, go down there and, and set up meetings. You can call the offices and get it all set up where you as a group can go from one to the next to the next. So, so I would meet with mine, our group would meet with my representative, and then we go meet with someone else in our group's representative after that. But you can really, you know, blow this up. Like I wrote in here, the sky's the limit. You can promote it with your local media bring your friends and family. Why not? What a better, you know, field trip for your kids to introduce them to democracy and how the whole system works. I brought my sons down. It was a great experience. You can make t-shirts, you can take pictures. Um, legislators really love the PR when you can put it out on social media and tag them. Um, and then afterwards, throw an after party because you have been a, ch a part of changing medical history and you've supported the whole TSW community. It's not just for yourself. You're supporting all the people who are coming along behind. So even if the resolution doesn't pass in your state this year, even if your big effort didn't get the job finished this year, 
um, you can take it back the next year and you're one huge step closer because you've raised awareness. Now you've put it on people's radar. Now they're thinking about it um, and you can just keep the movement going. So you also have um, been empowered. You are an advocate. And I just want to give a, a shout out to my friend, Tim, who is on this call. He actually helped us with drafting the resolution. He's been in health policy for 30 years. Um, and he actually flew in when we did our big Capitol Hill day here in Georgia. So um, he gave me a gift of becoming an advocate. That's what I hope to do with all of you here too. And just letting you know, you can do this. And once you're a part of change, it's just an amazing feeling, not just for the TSW community, but there are so many things in our world that we should be getting involved in and we should be bringing change and raising our voices about. So anyway, um, I hope you all will come on this journey with us. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Like I said, this really is our fight and it is up to us to make this happening happen. We have been reaching out to some national organizations to, to get behind this effort. Some are saying yes, some are saying um, no, thank you. <laughs> but really when it comes down to it, it, it is us who has to do the work. So I hope you will join. And, and like I said, if you have any questions, we are here to help you through that process. Us. And I told our It's Ann board today, and I'm telling you now, the first group who gets at least 20, 25 people together in your state for a Hill Day, I will fly out and I will do that with you. I, I am here to support in however I can. Um, it's exciting. And if, if we can get one passed, we'll get another and another and another. I will say too that as far as legislators are concerned, they're a lot more open to this message I have found than many healthcare providers are just because they don't have all that initial pushback because it goes against their historical biases sometimes. But legislators do want to hear. And a lot of times, um, you know, they have no like issues that just pop up in their head immediately. Like sometimes we can face with our, our, our doctors, which I think can make us want to pull back a little bit and not be quite so open. So be confident. Um, you have truth. We know that this is happening. We know that help needs to be um, given to our community and we are the ones to do that. Even if our voice is shaking, even our, our you know, limbs are trembling. And I will tell you, I've had that happen um, many times when I go into these unfamiliar territories, but it's okay. It's all right to feel fear. It's all right to feel emotion. Um, we have a really important cause that we need to work for. So now we're gonna open it up to question and answers. I am gonna go ahead and um, read any questions that are in the, the, the question box and um, feel free to add any more if something came up. So I have one here that says the resolution of question mark, sorry, specific. So the resolution is, is basically saying that TSW is a real condition. Um, it specifies um, what's being experienced by patients. It's talking about the need for research and for more education for healthcare providers and the general public. So I'll be sending out the draft of that resolution and you can read through it. And basically what you're gonna be doing is you'll give it to your legislator and say, hey, will you get this passed in our state? They will tweak it um, so that it makes sense for your state. Um, but basically it's going to be the same information in each one. So um, can you describe the resolution? Hopefully, hopefully I did, <laughs> um, but you'll be able to read through it and um, you'll see what's inside. So when, while we're on, are you still on antivirals? Um, sometimes I am. So it depends on when it just pops up. So herpeticum is something that, that is always with you. When your immune system goes down, a lot of times it'll come up. So if I'm very stressed out, um, if I get a, another virus or I'm sick or something, um, I can have her pedicum pop back up. And so I just have to take antivirals to control it. Uh, where will we get the info on what to do next? I see the links in the webinar, but they aren't clickable. Um, I am going to be sending out um, an email to everybody who's joined and everyone who has registered for this. And we have about eight different documents. So I reference them in that checklist that I just went through. So you'll have a copy of what to write in an email. You'll have a TSW awareness fact sheet, which you'll give, you can print that out and bring that to your legislator, or you can send it in an email too, but it basically just 
talks more about what TSW is. And we have probably six or seven different doctors wrote a quote for us about how we need to more research, patients need more support, that sort of thing. So they know it's not just some fringe patient group on the internet who is pushing this forward. There actually is a, a lot of medical professionals who are behind this too. So um, that will be in that fact sheet that you will bring. Um, we have Lucy's story that you can print out and bring with you. Um, let's see, we have the best practices for meeting with your legislators. So all of these different resources, like I mentioned, I will be emailing them all to you, but you'll also be able to find them on the ITSAN um, website. And right after this, I'll, I'll show you a slide with that link and with my contact information. Um, is it possible for us to connect with others in our state? Yes, that's why I asked everyone to put your name, your state, and your connection with TSW in the chat box. So we will take a screenshot of, of that and then try to connect you. Um, otherwise, if you see, you know, there are several people who are in the state of Pennsylvania, if you're from Pennsylvania, then you can, in the chat box even right now, reach out to them privately and ask them for their email. Um, otherwise, you know, you can connect on Facebook is another way. Um, one of the tips that I did to connect with others in the state of Georgia is I went into our closed Facebook group and I just in the search bar put Atlanta, Georgia, and quite a few people came up. So their names would come up and then I would message them, private message them and say, hey, do you want to, you know, meet up? Um, would you want to go to the Capitol with me? Um, that sort of a thing. So that's how you can connect. And really, guys, you know, as I mentioned in the very beginning of this webinar, we have a limited capacity as it's in. So what we're trying to do is give you the tools and encourage you to just go for it and, and get this done in your state. Um, we will help you as much as you can, but we really need um, different groups to take ownership and just to push this forward. So if you have like five or 10 people in your state, just get in, get in touch with each other. Start you know, like a group chat or like a group email um, and just stay connected when you're reaching out to your legislator, keep in touch and let everybody know, hey, I heard from this person or this person, I'm having a meeting, do you wanna come with me? It's always nice to do it together. Um, like I said, if you can get a big group together in your state, I will come out and I'll, I'll help you facilitate that meeting. Um, how can we connect with other TSW advocates in our state? We can meet up to brainstorm and work collectively. Yes, hopefully I just um, addressed that. Has TSW been brought to court of law? Um, there have been several who have worked on like a class action lawsuit. Um, it's very hard um, as far as that's concerned because so many people in TSW have used a variety of different steroids. And usually with a lawsuit, um, instead of a class of drugs, you have to go over a specific drug you have to um, go after, I should say. So it's difficult. It's not that it's absolutely impossible, um, but you would have to have a unique situation um, in order to bring a lawsuit and really move that forward. Uh, let's see. I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the chat. <laughs> so that's great. Thanks for posting stuff in there. Um, what progress has been made with the FDA? So we have had a couple of different meetings with the FDA. Um, we presented the whole TSW problem um, with the gaps that we see as far as labeling is concerned, um, because the FDA, um, they are a regulating agency, which basically tells doctor the safety profiles of these drugs and how they should be used. What we feel the FDA needs to be doing is changing the labels to put more appropriate usage guidelines and also a warning of topical steroid withdrawal because right now no one's the wiser, right? And uh, patients and doctors alike because when the doctors look at the information, they're not seeing that either. So we're asking in the FDA to look at that, um, to change the product labels and also to issue a public health advisory, which would basically be kind of doing like a safety alert to doctors and telling them, you know, this is going on, you need to be aware of this, um, TSW is a real thing. So we had a conversation with them, 
Um, we, we went back and talked with them about some of the things that we're asking them to do. The FDA was basically trying to shift responsibility and saying, this is not in our purview. This is the practice of medicine. Doctors know all about this. They're just not telling patients, which we know is not the case. Most doctors who we have talked to are completely unaware of this condition. So there's a gap somewhere. Um, there's a disconnect and we're not trying to point fingers either. We're just trying to alert, you know, these different agencies um, of the fact that there is a disconnect and it needs to be fixed. So the FDA has told us that they will publish a report within the first quarter of this year, and we have yet to hear anything from them, even though we keep on giving them any information that comes out about TSW. The UK has done a lot of work, and um, that's awesome. It's, it's great that they have a position statement by the British Academy of Dermatology and the Eczema Society. Um, that's something that, that patients have to, that they can refer to. And also their medical regulate, re regulating agency, the MHRA has published a 26 page report on TSW. We told the FDA about that. They said that they will reference it, um, but again, they haven't done a whole lot. So what we've been doing is trying to go to Congress to put pressure on the FDA because the FDA is funded by the government. So we're working on that. But like I mentioned earlier in this call, um, a lot of that work is very slow going. And in order to pass a bill, it can be, you know, years before we see that, which is why we're trying to get some of the state stuff going to push that along and to let Congress know, listen, this is something that's very important to people. Um, you can see evidence of that by the state activity. So um, we're also working to connect with the National Institute of Health, so the NIH, which is the research institutions that's um, funded by the federal government. I'll tell you that there seems to be more interest um, from the um, allergy and immunology side of medicine than there is with dermatology. Uh, so we're kind of pushing along in that path. Um, to see if we can get some meetings with them and to do a presentation um, so that they can see what we're seeing in the patient community. So Patty mentioned about um, the TSW Awareness Day. That is part of the resolution. Um, we, we talk all about um, TSW, what's happening, the need for more research. And because of that, we're asking your state to make um, February 3rd, which is the day that it's in was incorporated, um, TSW Awareness Day. That way that can be used as, you know, another tool that can push out resources, push out awareness um, that we can share on social media and a lot of other different ways. But that is included in the resolution. So another question is, can both our Senator and our representative get the resolution passed or should we target one over the other? How does it get passed? Is there a vote? So really what you're going to be doing is just asking um, both of them and whoever says yes first, go with that. <laughs> we just need one person to bring it forward um, and get it passed. And you know, in my case with the eczema resolution, all I had to do was hand it over and my Senator did all the rest of the work. He contacted me when it was passed and um, gave me a copy of it. I have it framed. So it really is easy as far as that's concerned. Has ITSAN been approached by any journalists or media organizations? Yes, um, we have. I am praying that we get like a really, really well-known, renowned um, investigative journalist uh, because when you get the right person to cover it, it really has so much more traction. Um, so if you are aware of any, if, if any of you on this call have contacts with media, please put them in touch with it, San, um, because really we just keep on knocking on all the doors and eventually, you know, the right ones will open. But I will say that every piece of um, media that's out there is adding to the collective message. Um, Washington Post did an article last year that said, there have been over 515 million TikTok views with TSW as the hashtag. So it's really, really clear that people care about this. People have been using this medication, really care about this, and they're experiencing this on 
um, a much higher scale than what is, you know, it's referred to as a rare occurrence. Um, we know that it's not rare. So every time a person shares a story in media, every time a publication comes out, it's all adding to this collective message. Um, I will tell you a little story. Um, I have a friend who works at NIH. Um, some of you may know him. And when I first told him about TSW, he told me later, at first I thought you were like just kind of a crazy lady, you know, like I, I looked it up on the internet though and found it everywhere, like in social media, everyone's talking about it. And then he said, I went and I looked for the research and it was like crickets. And, and he's like, I didn't get it. Like, why is there no research around this? It's so strange. And it really is just because if it's had to take this groundswell really of people talking about it, of, of showing, you know, this is a real problem that's happening and pushing back against a lot of the resistance that we're getting from the medical community until we finally get some action. Um, so it's been a challenge. It's been an uphill battle for the 10, last 10 years, honestly, um, because it's a message, don't ask me why, that is very, very hard um, it's a hard pill to swallow. So I know it's gonna take a lot of money. It's gonna take a lot of time to change it, but it really, you know, it's gonna take people getting involved and speaking up and raising their voice. So it, it is why what we're doing here today. So any other questions, anybody? I know once you take a look at the resources and, and here's that slide, um, where you can link, link to the campaign resources at, on the ITSAN website. That's my email address that you can reach out to me. Once you take a look at those things, there may be some more questions that come up and feel free to reach out. Uh, like I said, we're here to help with that um, and, and just kind of walk you along in the process. I will say too that every state has a different um, amount of time that their legislators meet during the year. Some people, some states, they meet all year long. Other states like mine, it wraps up at the end of March. So we really have a small window in some states. And you can look that information up if you just look up, like in my case, Georgia State Legislature or Ohio Legislature. You can look it up online, find out when they meet and how much time that you have. Um, that will kind of determine if it could be passed this year. If you know, it's later in the year, you can still reach out to your um, elected officials and have a meeting with them and ask if they'll introduce this this coming year or the next year. So even if the session is over, it's fine. Um, yeah, Nina says you can find the calendar online. That's great. All right, well, I think we're good guys. We have answered the questions that are here in the box. Thank you all so much for taking time to um, be a part of this webinar today. And I look forward to seeing what happens. I'm super excited. I, I really think that we can do this. Um, so yes, connect with the people from your state, reach out to us at ITSAN. We will help um, get this across the finish line. Thank you all.